Guys, Josh Kerner here. Hope you've been having a great day today. I have been glued to all the screens I can find looking at everything Nikon today. The Z6 and the Z7 are two of the most exciting cameras I feel like to be announced. Before we get into, you know, kind of my opinions on these and what they mean for Nikon and for the marketplace and what I feel like everybody's already ignoring about these, I'd love to dive into the specs with you for just a second. So the Z6 is very much looking like a port of the a7 III. That's gonna be, of course, if you don't know too much better. Now, what that means is that it's 24 megapixel, 120 uh, frames in full HD, 4K 30. It's got you know the, the exact same ISO range. You're gonna get one XQD card slot, 11 FPS, 273 autofocus points, you know, log, 10-bit 422 output via HDMI, which is a really big point. Five-axis IBIS. This specs alone is, in my opinion, not just comparable to the a7 III, but a compelling option if you're going to be on the fence. So the Z7's got 45 megapixels, very much like the D850. It's got 400-odd autofocus points. 200 shy of the a7 III A9, but still more than enough. It's got 9 FPS, which is considerable. 5-axis IBIS. It's got the same video that I described for the Z6, so that's 4K30, 1080p120, log, N-log, and then a 10-bit 422 output, which is great. That's really important in today's very video-heavy world. So the Z6 at 2,900 euro, with the 24 to 70 and the Z7 with the 24 to 70 at 4,200 euro, wow, those were easy to get mixed in my mind, are gonna be very good value propositions, but they are gonna be a bit pricey for you know, the rest of the market. Sony's got some great options on the table that cost significantly less than that, and that's gonna be a big hurdle for Nikon. Hey y'all, really quick, I need you to motor drive all over that like button. I'd love to hit a thousand likes on this video. That's never happened for me before. So if you could help me go on this journey as a YouTuber, as a, as a small creator, that would mean the absolute world to me. Thank you. So I feel like there is, you know, a big conversation here around, you know, specs and features and who makes the objectively best whatever. And that's, that's all fine and dandy. There's, a, there's certainly a place for that. But I feel like everybody is ignoring a couple of other things that are really important with the launch of the Z6, the Z7, and how they do over time. What's really key here is that Nikon, on the first hand, has still not managed to actually ship all of the D850s. They're still way out of stock. Now, on the other hand, Nikon desperately needs market share. They're losing, and one could argue hemorrhaging, market share to Canon, Panasonic, Sony, Olympus, and Fuji. So what, what the Z6 and the Z7 are is a play for market share. And, and the pie here is increasingly shrinking, right? So it's not just the cameras. It's also how broader trends are moving in the market. Now, Nikon is a little bit lucky. And they're a little bit lucky because their fans are the mainstream versions of Pentaxians, right? Flirting with fanboyism on a perhaps greater than healthy scale is common among Nikon users, just like it is among Canon, Sony, everybody else, right? That's not a new phenomenon. When these users, though, have left Nikon, because a lot of them have, and moved into some of these other manufacturers, sometimes mirrorless, sometimes, you know, Sony A7 series range, what Nikon's doing is they're saying, here's a bridge back home. By recapturing that market share, by bringing these former loyal fanboy user base Nikon users back home, back into the fold, Nikon is not only recapturing market share as you know industry numbers go, but they're also doing a few other key things. On the one hand, Nikon is earning back their, their users and their former users' trust in not necessarily entry level, but full frame entry level, bodies and then very professional bodies that are also mirrorless. So it's, it's a trust, it's a brand equity move as well. But critically, this is also a way for Nikon to start transforming the way that their business operates, right? They haven't really put out a compelling 
full frame DSLR in a minute. The D750 is good, but it's old. There are some other challenges in Nikon's line, but by having these as their flagship options as mirrorless by simplifying their product lineup, what they're also doing is they're saying, they're, it's a big apple that they're dangling in front of their entry level market. They're saying you can get a much better camera and not have to sacrifice some of the great things about your entry level camera, like size and weight. And you're also getting all the performance, if not more so, than some very, very high-end professional options. I feel like there's one big key element that a lot of people are not really big fans of admitting, and that is that Nikon doesn't need a Sony killer. They don't need to, you know, stab Sony in the heart. What Nikon needs to do is make a good enough camera. What Nikon has done is make a good enough camera. Although one might argue that, you know, lacking 400 odd autofocus points on the Z6, not the wisest move if you want this to be kind of an apples to apples comparison with the a7 III. What we, what we forget so easily is that as photographers, we've dealt with less than hundreds of autofocus points for years and made fantastic images. So when we take that part of the equation and throw it away, just that one part, what we're starting to see out of Nikon is a much more holistic picture of the direction they want to go. This is a direct comp competition with the a7 III, and I feel like Nikon has done a very good job of providing a compelling value proposition that is on par with the a7 III. And obviously the Z7 is a pretty near port of the D850. What that means is that it's a great competitor to the a7R III. The D850 sold in gobs more than the a7R III did, so I think that we can feel fairly confident in the performance of the Z7 by comparison to the a7R III. The, the, the brand of Nikon still means a lot, and a lot of people are still really turned off by the brand of Sony, and Nikon bringing an option to the table that is both entry-level full frame and to bring a model to the table that is very high-end professional, it's a really wise move. That's about all that I have for this video. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I hope that you're as massively stoked about these two fantastic cameras as I am. I'm, you know, going out there and I'm gonna need to get my hands on time as soon as humanly possible. Thank you very much for your time, for your attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.